to went. Good to go. Good to went. <laughs> Black shit family. Black shit family. Black shit family. I'm here doing my social distancing <laughs> with my brothers. Yeah, from another mother's here in the Gambia. I've got Mansa to my left from Temji World. Yes. And I've got New Black World Order. Yeah, Josh Black I've got, Power. Yeah, Black Power. Mm-hmm. New Black World Order. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, that's the channel. To, yeah. to my right. So these are their channels. So don't forget to subscribe to their channels. Yeah, and if you haven't subscribed to Black City yet, please do. Now, if you're new to the channel, Black City is all about our exit. Black City. It's all about our return to the motherland. Uh, we're filming this in my home right here in Africa. And um, what's it all about? How did we get here? And how can you get here? So this program is all about our repatriation and our relocation. And we're here to work out something for you. We've been tasked with a challenge. How can you get to Africa for free? You heard it. (laughs) Matt's a tasked it. Josh has tasked it. So we're here to find solutions. So let's imagine if you're more brat pocket than brat pocket. Yeah, and for my American viewers, that means if you, don't, you don't have any money in your pocketbook. <laughs> so, and for all of my Caribbean family, you no, know what no. that means, you know how no. nothing. No. <laughs> and for all of our uh, 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 family over there in Europe, it means nandanero, okay? Or no money, no franco, no money. And if they are all our family in England, It means you're totally skinny. So, that's how we're going to get to Africa with no money. You said you got some ideas. Yeah. Uh, So let's say them out. So, you want to go first? My solution, it's not guaranteed, but it's kind of. um, You can just buy an old van. I've driven, my van cost me £700. And I bought my van, two spares. So in total, maybe a thousand. And I drove here. If I wanted to sell my van, I would get that that money. And if I brought merchandise in my van, clothes, electronics, whatever, it would be a free journey. That's how you can do it. Okay, so he's saying that. (laughs) (laughs) So his idea is that first off, you have to come together as a team. Yes. Yeah. So... Doesn't that require money? Yeah, but I mean, someone <laughs> people have got money somewhere. Okay, so you club together, yeah? yeah. Say, how many we can fit in the van? Say six people, no, five people? No, but you don't Four want to people. put that because you want to put merchandise so they can resell when they get here. So how many people can fit then? How you does know, that work? I mean, just put three in there. Three? In the van and the rest of the merchandise when you come here. And, you know, you can resell the van, resell, resell the merchandise and you're here. Okay, so that's his idea, that's yes. idea one. Yes. This is Jules's idea, yeah, so this is my idea, this is Nyanko Mandina. <laughs> and so that's my African name, if you didn't know, Nyanko Mandina, because I'm going to kind of start phasing out the old English name, British yeah, name, right. and yeah. you know, my mum gave it to me, so out of respect, I still use it, no, you understand? Yeah. So, but I'm going to, what I'm going to do is use both simultaneously, yeah. so yeah. So, Nyan Mandina's idea is that I think what you should do is go on all of those free sites, yeah? Like Free Cycle, like Shabok, like um, uh, Facebook, even yeah, even Country, um, uh, Facebook Market, yes. uh, all of the places where they do like um, house clearances and sales and stuff like that and then what i would do is also go to those all of those like areas like savile row and so on where they have those um really exclusive charity shops and i would go and buy all those designer clothes Mm -hmm. and so on and i would go to all those free rise recycle places i would go to all of those shops i would collect everything that i can i would stack it in my house and then I would resell it at value, and that would give you my money to leave 
and also to get a vehicle if I wanted to. Mm -hmm. And also um, I would take every item that I wasn't using, including shoes that I bought yes. that I didn't like, clothes that were too small or certainly didn't you know, suit me. Um, I would take all the old toys, baby clothes that were only used once. I would basically sell everything, books that I'd already read, um, I would leave nothing unturned. I would sell like a brick and bag sale and I would use that money to convert into um, my passage and also a deposit for uh, a, an apartment, a cheap apartment here for like, uh, you know, for at least six months mm -hmm. to a year so I can check it out and I can actually get out. And then I would um, obviously sell the vehicle. Like what you were saying, because we're taking it that we're overlanding yes, from, from we are. this preposition. We, we are. And then I would um, sell the vehicle or I would convert the vehicle and live in it. I would I would like I would me. I would like I would live on the side of the road like man. So. I've done that for the past two months. <laughs> and eat biscuits yes. <laughs> and uh, muesli. Yes, yeah, yes. I even bought some of his muesli. So, you know, there are things that you can actually, um, you know, sell as well. So you can bring things that you can sell and be a van seller here and sell out of a van. So if, you know, you're a person that can cook, you can do what they do in a lot of African countries, which is sell from the back of your van or sell from the back of your car. So if you can make good chicken or, you know, good anything, then, you know, there's always a way to you to make money um, in Africa. So... That's just my idea. So I, I was a bit long-winded. Yours no, was really I short. Mean, I mean, yours was, was actually good. Uh, very, very, very good. Oh. Very good. And um, you could even double the point where um, land goes as cheap as 1500 like 2020 or... Yeah, definitely. Right. So with the van... You, you just pluck it on the, on the land. On the land. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just put your walls up. and You can put a wall maybe one meter high. Put your van in there and... Your, the land is yeah. 1500 Yeah. You were set. And you could find even an old school van, in it, and convert it. Yeah, but that's, yeah, because my van was 700 Yeah. You can buy Sprinters and uh, Transit and Vauxhall for 500 in England. That's what we paid for ours, 500 500 quid for a white van. And yours was 20, 16 passengers? Um, no, that was different. Oh. I'm talking about my old white van. Oh, okay. Used, yeah. Um, to collect sofas and everything else. And that's you all know. you need. It's not difficult. And the thing is, we didn't even um, get to sell them. Like, when we got here, it was just like, you know, it, it was weird. It was like, we ended up giving a lot of stuff away. But out of that giving away, we got so much benefit. Right. Because everybody helped us. So, so yeah. And you're was, here for free. Yeah, exactly. Well, I'm, I'm living in this house and I don't pay no, any no, mortgage you, or rent. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so I don't pay any mortgage. Yeah. I don't pay any rent. I think land tax is something like 150 dollars a year. Um, um, yes, my indigenous. water heater is solar, my electricity is um, solar, and my water is a borehole. So basically, all we have to do is eat. Mm -hmm. and, uh, one um, second, please. What? Could you explain to the viewers and convert how expensive 150 the last is? Oh, yeah, so 150 the last is, it's like right now, is it 62 the last to the pound? Yeah, 63. 63. Okay. Is it 63? Oh. Hmm. Mm. That's <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get some So in other words, that's like two pounds <laughs> 30. Yeah. In America, that's three dollars per year for her expensive land tax. Yes. That's expensive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, so basically, <laughs> you know, you live large here, you yeah. live nice, and you get lots and lots and lots of nice, tasty mangoes, fruits, papayas, oranges, bananas, and you live literally almost like free. So, almost like free. Yeah. Well, that's free. That's for my neighbours. You see? No, uh, yeah, yeah. Josh? Uh -huh. Oh, my idea is kind of like a remix of, of your two ideas. But I'm thinking to bring the people together. So some people are not going to have 700 to buy the car at first. Some people are not going to have the money for the fuel. But if we were to organise and we knew we had a group 15 to 30 people that wanted to leave, we could then buy three to five fans. And we, what we would do is split that cost between. So each fan would be three people. That cost would be divided by the three people. Each three people will have a space in the van to bring stuff to then sell. 
Yeah, so if, as the, if they come collectively, it will can lower the cost. So you can have about 30 guys I'm from Tottenham from my area, for instance, and if we was to all come together and we was to buy the five vans, and if we was to fuel the car, it would be cheaper because one van is about 500, and that's three people, so three divided by five, which is over 100 that they're paying each. Whereas individually now, that would have been a 500 cost on that person. And then with the fuel now, that'd be about 800 divided by the three people. So that's about, oh, my maths have been tested now. Three divided by eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. About 270. About 270. So we've been under 500. Mm-hmm. That would be enough for a van for three people and with them be able to put load the van and to get here. I think that I think for, to ensure they get their money back would be to bring stuff that they know they could sell. So what we could do is let them know what to bring over as we're here and we know the demand and the need here. And the van would be as like a security just in case you couldn't sell what you had there. And then the van could then sell. I think I would recommend it as it's a bit of experience to get to Africa that way. We're not relying on the airlines either. And the airline flight is starting to go up now. I know a German company bought the Thomas Cook. But coming Gamba, you might be looking around 400, the cheapest, it might not be so low anymore. So I think if to do it that way, you can bring the people need here as well, as there's no factories or big industries here making stuff for them. So if we bought them, it don't have to be second hand. We can, you can buy fresh, brand new stuff and bring it here to sell. People here, there's people here with money that want to buy um, latest things as well. So it's a potential for someone to get experience to come to Africa and um, a chance for them to re- get a return on their money. And if it is split up between a few people, I do think it is a bit more feasible and just more safe. Mansa is a legend because he's done it on his own, so it's possible. But, but I think a lot of people for the first time not doing that before might want to be with three, four friends and, and, and try it that way. And then when you get here, it, man, you're in heaven. You're in heaven, okay. so, so your money that you spend, you wouldn't even really contemplate once you actually land in Africa because of how beautiful the place is. So I think it's a, it is a, a, a alternative to, mm-hmm. to, to, to flights and it also brings that unity again as, as what we need because you're splitting the cost between, between your peers and it brings it a lot cheaper and affordable and you can split the drive as well so you don't have to do one person doing that whole job. Like I said, Mantis is a legend and done it on its own. But with a few people, you could split the drive. You could do a one person drive for two hours and then swap over. So I think, I think it's, and the cars are going to drop value soon in England. All those cars that England don't want on the road, you can have here. So I think that that would be the, instead of just scrapping those cars, there's a lot of people in England now that after next year won't be allowed to have their car. And mm-hmm. instead of scrapping it for a 150, 300, take the car, fill it up and drive to Africa. Because you'll be able to sell it, get more, and you get to get to Africa, so... I think it's a good, a good alternative. Okay, okay, so let's pretend, let's, let's pretend, and I want you to join in this with me, let's pretend that the borders are now open, mm-hmm. yeah? But there aren't flights, but the borders are open. Yeah. So that means that overlanding now becomes an option. Let's all pretend that we have these letters that exempt us from having to have vaccines. Yeah. And um, let's all pretend that everything's gone nicely and that we are now got the green light to overland and to go. Mm-hmm. So what is a quick escape route? With or without money. You said this is about going to Africa for free. You set this up, my brother. So what is a quick now? Someone says, boy, I haven't got time to sell all them things, yeah, I haven't got time to go and get no van. Okay, okay. I, I need to go and I haven't got no money, but I need to get out. How, how can they go? Um, Timo, I mean... One minute, Gav. I mean, I mean, what he said was, was right, where if one person doesn't have, but they may have electronics or whatever, they can team up with this other person and get in their car. Because you can drive any car. I've seen any car in the middle of the desert. So you can, whatever, if you have a Corsa, a Volkswagen, a Jetta or Polo, you can get any car, team up with someone and say, look, this is what I've got, I haven't got collateral. I mean, I haven't got cash, but I have these as collateral. And I, I, they can team up and drive here. Okay, so I've got another idea. Okay. My idea involves fundraising. Okay. Yeah. Right? That takes time, doesn't it? You no, see? it doesn't. Okay, okay, let me hear you. Sorry. Yeah. I said the borders have lifted and I want to go. Yeah. So I'm saying that, you know, you can fundraise. You can fundraise. You can do crowdfunding amongst yeah. yourselves. Yes. Excuse my bracelets jiggling. But, sorry. Right. Yeah. You can fund, you can fundraise even with family members. 
You can say, look, I, I want to go. Can you give me? You said it's for free, right? Yes. So it means you have to beg. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm not too proud yeah. to beg. Mm -hmm. You know, if I need to do something, I ask my mum. My mum will help me if she can. Yeah, you you don't understand? Ask, you don't get. Exactly. Yeah. You know, if you've got big grown up children that are working, ask them. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. you've got friends that are working, mm -hmm. ask them. So that's another way. And yeah. if, if everybody gives you a fiver, a tenner, and then you tell everybody like, look, it's my birthday coming up, yeah. yeah, in like a couple of months time. And I know you'd usually give me a present or we go out for a drink or whatever. Instead, I'm trying to fundraise to get to Africa. Yeah. And so you tell people that you're fundraising to get to Africa. So if you go to church, you know, you ask the church to help you. You yeah. tell them your, your dire situation that you have to get out. You yeah. feel, you know, this urge, this need to leave and that you have to get out. And you ask them, you know, to, to do whatever it is, pray for you and put some money in that collection bucket yeah. or what have you. You can do a sponsored walk, a sponsored dance. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Fundraise. You you can you know what I'm saying do a do a do a sponsored slide. Do you know what I mean? Music slide. Yeah, all, all go to your people. mosque. Go to your. Do you know what I mean? Go yeah. to your temple. Uh, you know, go to your African spirituality yeah, yeah. church. Go to your gym. Uh, e even you know, uh, go to um, uh, school. You know, because what you can do is also bring resources to help um, people over here yeah, as well. Yeah, so it doesn't yeah. have to just be, you can be part of a mission, yeah. but your mission can be much bigger than yeah, that, definitely. in which case people sponsor you to drive to Africa. Yeah. So that way, yeah. that's free. <laughs> that's free. Yeah, come on. Yeah. Actually, actually, <laughs> actually, you're correct, because um, the Mormons, when they left England yeah. to go to America, basically what they've done. Because all of them did not have money to go to America. So there you have it. Yeah. So I guess returning citizens of Africa, yeah, we'll try to do the Mormons. Yeah, or we could, yeah. Crowd, or we could crowdfund a bus that goes back and forth. Now, so, that's an idea. Now, now, now we're getting off. Yeah. Now we're getting off. Yeah. Yeah. Crowdfund buses that, that we use, a black seat bus that's going to black seat you out of Babylon and into Africa, man. Yeah. If you crowdfund that. that. And my brother, my well, brother's got some, some, some vehicles here. Yeah, why not? Okay, I can ask him. Why not? Yeah. Nico, people want to leave. People want to leave. You can take them on a journey. How about if Black Sit does the crowdfunding yeah. and we get a Black Sit vehicle, yeah. Mansa drives it. 100%. Everybody yeah. pays him, you know what I mean? Yeah, a fee, fee to do the driving and yes. to, to, to do the guide and everything. Yeah, yeah. And then we just do it. How about we all do it together? Yeah, How about we all do it together? No one ain't gonna, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Everybody wants the same thing, which is out. Right, yeah. So yeah. if we do it from each country, and then everybody like gather at, at, at the border for each country, you just pick them up as you go along. Yeah, because yeah. from England, if they were, yeah, people idea. from England, if they were to meet me in London, I could just, it's because it's too empty. I can go to Portsmouth, take the ferry to Spain. That's a 24-hour ferry ride, or, but it's cheaper than petrol. Mm. Or we can go to Dover, drive, no, yeah, Portsmouth to, to Spain. To Spain, yeah. cheaper. Eight-hour drive to Algeciras, and we're in Africa. See? So there you have it. So we can do that. So we could we actually should. do crowdfunding, yeah. Yeah. like a black set crowdfunding. Yeah. I don't have a crowdfunding platform. And in fact, I never even thought about this. It's only because I'm this. being inspired. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm being inspired. Adrian would have ideas, but Adrian's out at the moment. Um, you know, uh, I wish he was here, but he's not. But I do love him dearly. And you know, it's been an opportunity for us to get our children over yeah. and get our family yeah, members yeah, over. Yeah, yeah. So why not we think ones. about this? Because you know, we've all got our loved ones there. You know, we have our loved ones that oh, I'm not going to Africa. You know, I don't want to go to Africa. I don't want to live in Africa. You know, and then you've got the ones no, I go to Jamaica, but I won't go to Africa. Yeah. And those people that want to stay there, you stay there. Yeah. yeah, you stay there in your lockdown while we are free. You stay there in your lockdown being controlled while we are free. You stay there in your lockdown while they control how you shop, where you shop, what you shop, where you shop and what you do and even how many times you can go for a walk. Yeah, but we are free and we want everybody to be free. So no, I'm not rubbing it in your face. What I am saying is that the third world, as they call it, yeah, is now my first world, yeah, to be in a better place to be. Yeah? yeah?
That's all I'm saying is that it's like everything's turned upside down. Yeah? yeah? All those hypocritical and racist commentators that used to call and denigrate Africa. Now look, we can eat freely, live freely, yeah, do yeah. whatever freely. We yeah, are. No idea. They haven't got an no, no idea how the food is here. No, no. We do a listen. I'll, t I'll tell you something. Um, the other people that are here, if you stick a gun to their head and say get on a plane, they would not. That's true. The other race, races that are here in Africa, you cannot get them to leave. They would never leave. They're, they're riding motorcycles, no shirt, no helmet, just chilling. Ah, you have no idea how free it is here. Mm -hmm. And if they don't want to leave, uh, trust me, they do not want to leave and they are not leaving until they die. We have no choice, man. It's lovely here. It is. It's total. Do you know what? My analogy is I went to see some land. I, I went to Jalambang. Mm. And I went to Casa and I went to Jambo, and I went to uh, somewhere just outside of Brikama. And let me tell you, it was a veritable paradise. I'm not joking with you. I stood and I could see like every tree of almost like, you know, orange tree, lemon tree, grapefruit tree, palm tree. Avocado tree, mango wow. tree, cashew tree. Me and Seth were just like this. Yeah, we just stood there like this. Like, mm -hmm. and I'm sure if you go and dig up, you can find sweet potato down there. You understand? Like, I'm just like, and you, can eat you, and you have to pinch yourself, you know? Yeah. Like, you know, am I really living this? Can you, like, can I, you believe we're living this? Man, I didn't know the way that they have us living. I can't believe that they show us this side of it. The grass is greener on the other side, to yeah. pull it in, sh in shoe. The grass is definitely greener on the other side. And just when we're coming from London and thinking that we're in the best, we didn't take a chance to look <laughs> on the other side. But the grass is greener, man. Literally green for real green. <laughs> yeah. Greener, man. It's greener, it's greener. So yeah, I think what we're saying is we are a road to freedom, we could call it. Yeah. If, we, if we start out with that driving in to drive out here, the road to freedom. Yeah. Yeah, because people could follow behind if they weren't safe, never done a journey before. But if Matsu was taking a bus and the people didn't want to go on a bus but had their own car, had their own van and said they want to make the move, they could all follow behind. Do a rally. Yeah, yeah do said, a rally. Was, caravan. Because, yeah. Caravan of love. Yeah, man. Because every year, there's, there are, um, every year, every two years, there are rallies from Germany, Austria, Sweden. Belgium, Czechoslovakia, Poland, Italy, rallies to England, I mean to Africa. Every year, every two years or every year, they come here. They bring their vehicles, they have a good time. Then some of them, they leave the vehicles here and go back. We can all do the same thing. It's just that we haven't been told that we can do the same thing. You know, so. We shouldn't even have to be told. This is the whole thing. We shouldn't have to be told, but you know what? We have been deceived. Yeah. This is the whole thing about Africa. Yeah. Before you came to Africa, before I came to Africa, before you came to Africa, what was your perception of Africa? Well, the thing for me, I knew it wasn't what it was, so I didn't have their perception, to be honest, mm -hmm. because I knew it wasn't what it was, because I always spoke to people, because a smartphone, it's actually a smartphone, but it makes a lot of people dumb, because they just use a smartphone for WhatsApp, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and make a phone call, not to get information at all. But I used all of these things to get information for myself. So I knew where I was going. Mm -hmm. And uh, whatever was said 10 years, 15 years ago, I know it was pure rubbish. Yeah, totally. So I had an open mind. That's good because, I mean, I actually saw an advert which I could not believe, which was an advert from the famine in Ethiopia over 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. And that image of still being used yes. um, for a charity. So yes. therefore, the the, the perpetual, the way in which they perpetually, uh, constantly send out the wrong message, mm. you know, and it's being reinforced on a daily basis. And so, because of that, you're not seeing people living ordinary lives, um, you know, and enjoying a, a better life, a better, better life I mean, in we Africa. Haven't, we haven't even have to go further. 
This is a marble table in Africa. Yeah, marble table. This is a marble table in Africa. <laughs> we haven't got to go any further. Yeah, marble table, table in leather chairs. Ah. <laughs> and I think it's what they highlight because every country's got bad. Every country's yes. got good. I think if we went to London and highlighted the bad, it, I think it, it would be worse a reflection than what they saw in Africa because you've got people living in the street in England, you've got people with no food, you've got people... In Africa, the culture here is you can't even fall to that level because someone won't let you be hungry. If they know that you're sleeping outside, they will bring you in. Yeah. So I feel like what they're portraying is definitely not what the thought of was with Africa. And it's like we did have to take that gamble and that chance and to come back and rebuild our home. If this is our home, then we can't be waiting for it to be developed. Um, London was built with the really much with the Caribbeans coming and the London that we see now and praise as high was built by us. But our same, our same builders haven't come home and built our home. So, but even so, I still believe it's a better place because the people and the love, they won't allow it to, to get so low. Mm -hmm. So I do feel like, yeah, we do, we do kind of owe Africa because it's still providing us with food and all the resources. And we owe it to come back to some extent to rebuild. Yeah. To such a, some extent. Yeah, I think we should take the skills that we have. Yeah, we and, and And, you know, the, the positive that we've acquired along the journey and reinvest that yeah. um, back in Africa. That's what yeah. I think we need to do. It's time yeah. for us to reinvest back into yeah. Africa. We owe it to Africa, man. Yeah. We, we owe it to Africa. Oh, hi right, Paul, one second. So I think that's my cue to wind up now. So any other little quick suggestions on uh, ways that we can get to Africa for free without having to buy anything? without having to purchase anything. Uh, uh, have a quick brainstorm, quickly. Um, I would just say, don't think too hard, just do it. <laughs> it's not an answer to your question, but yeah, it's my answer to everything. I think, don't I think, think about to, it, just I, do it. I think we need to unite and become self-reliant on the post of getting to Africa. So instead of relying on the airline and relying on different forms of travel, we become reliant on ourselves. We start to we start with one bus, we start with two buses, three buses, but but that bus to get here would be our our, our self-reliance of how we're getting there. So I think anything's gonna cost because they're always gonna put a currency on the natural resource. But once you get here and we have the, our own form of transport to come, we can negotiate the prices and, and stuff like that. And plus, when you get on a bus and you come, you it's gonna strip, strip directly to you and you can get land with no problem. If you get your stuff with no problem, so it's not like you get to Africa now, then you're scratching your head like, well, what am I gonna do now? You come to Black Sea, man, you come to Julia and you're sorted. Yeah. Like I said, you get everything. So I think crowdfunding is what you should do and a Black Sea bus to, mm -hmm. to make everyone Black Sea out of London. Okay, so I got an idea, my last one, my yeah. last one. Right. So I said free, right? Yeah. Absolutely free. Yeah. You charge for the seats on the bus, like you would if you was a travel company. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And whoever's organising the tour, everyone pays a percentage to that person. The person organising it goes for free. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't a competition. <laughs> it wasn't a competition. Right? Okay. But there you go. So yeah. thanks, sir. Yeah, and Josh, just thank you so much. Uh, Blacksit family. Cafe, you got an idea? Yeah. Go on, quick then. What idea? What do you mean? Um, <laughs> He's been playing games, he's got no clue. Just come and say smash the like button for us. One, two, three. Smash that like button. Comment down below. Please subscribe and ring that bell. Ready, everybody? ding a ling a ling ding a ling a ling ding a ling a ling 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 so, uh, please uh, ring that bell for all notifications. And tap that ding dong, like. Yeah, and remember, please, please. Tap uh, that ding dong or just, you know. I'm coming, Paul. Just remember, one Africa, one nation, one people, one destiny, one love. One unity. One unity. And one, and one world. One world. And I like that one world. Yeah, man. Yeah. Black world, man. One black world, yeah. <laughs> one Tendry world. Yeah, and one black world. Yeah. Love that. Please remember to subscribe I to Tendry world. Please remember to subscribe to... I want Black Tit world, just to not forget. Okay. And then... And Summer Sankofa, the YouTube channel. Yeah, say it slowly. Summer Sankofa.
and that will be the YouTube channel. We'll put it on the screen, yeah, and please. Yeah. Temju World, Mansa of Temju World. I'm here for all of your services. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, we need to really get them a lots of viewer hours and lots of subscribers. Because uh, another way that we could make money, do you like this? Do you like <laughs> this? Yeah, is to create your YouTube channel and mm -hmm. try and see if you can make some content and monetize and maybe get some advertisers and maybe that can help you use your phone because you've already got that mm -hmm. and maybe do that as a more long-term strategy but maybe that can help you to uh, get money to come yeah. Yay! Yay! purchase your tracks today Purchase your tracks today.